Hi everyone, I want to share something pretty unbelievable that um, I read about and I have a special book on as well. Um, and it's based on a certain calculation. Basically, it's the words of the Vilna Gaon, um, who says that we know there are 5,845 Pesukim verses in the Torah. And he says that it's a known thing, which was, I guess, known to him, that each one of those verses corresponds to a year. In other words, verse one corresponds to year one of world history. Verse two corresponds to year two and so on. Verse 1000 corresponds to year 1000. What's interesting is that he says you can see the events or maybe the major events of that year reflected in that pasuk, that verse. So what's fascinating is that people have gone back and they've seen certain big major events reflected in that pasuk, in that verse, in the Torah itself. Sometimes it's pretty explicit and sometimes it's more subtle. What's fascinating to me is that I went with some of my students and we did a reverse calculation. We went to the end of the Torah, which is verse 5, 845, and worked way backwards to last year, this year, next year, and the year after. And it falls out that we are in the year 5784, next year is 5785, and there are corresponding verses to that. Now, those verses appear, as you can imagine, very near the end of the Torah, at the end of the book of Devarim Deuteronomy, in Parashat, in the chapter of Ha'azinu. Now, Ha'azinu is actually a poem, and it's a poem that is told by Moshe Rabbeinu, because Moshe Rabbeinu, this is his final speech, his last will and testament, and he's talking to the Jewish people who are about to leave um, the desert and enter into Israel under the leadership of Joshua, Yehoshua. So I'm going to pull up on the screen. You can see the verses that correspond to uh, last year, this year, next year, and the year after. So if you look at verse uh, 32, so we're in uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 32, Lamed Gimel uh, and Lamed Gimel, and sorry, Lamed Bet and Lamed Bet. And it says over there, in verse uh, 32, Ki Sodom gafnam umishadmot amora. Their vineyard is the vineyard of Sodom and the fields of Amora, which are locations of Sodom and Amora, where there was a lot of, of challenge and immorality and destruction that happened in that place. This, by the way, corresponds to this year. Their grapes are grapes of gall and clusters of bitterness were given to them. So we know that this year, which started on Rosh Hashanah, actually, um, a few weeks before we got to Sukkot, was going to be a challenging year, according to this verse, because that is not a great prediction. The next verse, and this part is pretty unbelievable, corresponds to 2025, and that's verse 33. And over there, the first word, well, if you're Sephardic, you pronounce it as Hamat, but if you're Ashkenazic, you pronounce that word as Hamas, which is interesting in and of itself. Hamat taninim, serpent's venom, yenam is their wine. Verosh petanim, achzar, and the poison of cruel vipers or snakes. So seems also that there's going to be a, um, a challenge of people. Actually, the Ramban says of actors inside of Israel who are going to be like snakes hurting us and attacking us. Okay, it shouldn't be that way. God willing, it won't be. But I'm just telling you what the verse corresponds to. What's fascinating is the year after that, so now we're jumping to 2026, well, starting 2025, 2026, the verse, which is verse 34, is actually a really amazing verse in the Torah. Because it's a known pasuk. Well, let me just read it first of all, then I'll tell you what how the commentators understand it. Uh, Hello, who kamus imodi? It is, oh, it's that almost rhetorical. Is it not revealed with me? This is God speaking. And chatum ba'atzratai, that something good is sealed in my treasuries. It doesn't say good, but the commentators say that this is actually a reference to something very, very good, that God has 
sealed up in his treasuries, and that's ready to be revealed from his treasuries. What exactly is that? So the commentators have said that this Pasuk actually is a reference to the third and final Beit HaMikdash, which corresponds to the year 2025-2026. Now, I have a lot to say about the third and final Beit HaMikdash. Who's going to build it? How they're going to build it? And that could be a topic for another video. But that's what the verse seems to correspond to, and that's the year that it corresponds with. Um, what's really incredible is that the verses that come after that talk more in length about the resurrection of the dead and other uh, prophecies of our prophets. But Mashiach must come, says the Rambam, before the building of the third and final temple, because he is going to be the one who's going to fight the wars of God right before that comes. And he'll be the one who builds the final third and final Beit HaMikdash in Yerushalayim on Harabayat. And that is even the proof that he is Mashiach. So it may be meaningful to you. I find it very interesting. I mean, I have a lot more to say on this, but we'll stop over there. And um, God willing, we'll see the end of this terrible time the Jewish people are going through in Israel and of course the end of the world. And we should still see the building of the final Beit HaMikdash, the Karov, very soon. Amen.